Hi guys. Today we're going to talk about high pressure and low pressure systems. Now you've all seen maps like the one I have on the screen here on the Weather Channel and you see all these little H's and L's all over the place. Well these signify the center of a high pressure system and the center of a low pressure system. That means the air pressure in this whole area is really, really high and it gets higher and higher and higher the closer you get to the letter H, okay? So this is the highest pressure in this area. This is the highest pressure in this area. This is the lowest pressure, lowest pressure. So if I were to, um, if you were standing right here on Earth where this H is and you drove away from the H, the pressure would be decreasing and decreasing and decreasing. On the flip side of that, if you're over here in Wyoming, you're standing right by this L, and you drove away from where this L is, the air pressure would be increasing and increasing and increasing. And that makes sense, right? Because if you're here and you move outward from the L, what are you approaching? You're approaching higher pressure, okay? Well, air is a gas. And you can't just poke a hole in a gas and have it stay a void, right? The gas will fill in that void, okay? so. Picture my head as a big bucket, okay? And I've got a divider right down the middle. And I fill one side of the bucket with water and the other side is empty, okay? So I've got a bucket that has a divider down the center and I've got one side with water and the other side is empty. If I lift up that divider, what's gonna happen? The water will rush in from the side that was full into the side that was empty until it balances out, right? That's the same thing with air, okay? So air in a low pressure system where there's very little pressure will always be filled in with high pressure. High pressure is going to blow out of the center of a high and into areas of lower pressure. And that will continue until the air pressure balances out. Okay, so what does that mean for weather? Well, high pressure systems are always associated with clear, relatively cool, and calm conditions. Okay, so we've got no precipitation is associated with highs. Okay, storms and weather fronts like we talked about the other day, warm weather fronts and cold weather fronts, those are always coming out of low pressure systems, all right? So if you see a low over your area on a map, you should expect some sort of precipitation. That's where air masses are meeting that are different and they're gonna move and change and shift and air is gonna rise and condense and you're gonna get precipitation. Whereas over here in a high pressure system, um, air is being pushed down to earth, okay? So you have to think of you have to think of our atmosphere as a three-dimensional volume of air, which it is, right? We're here on the ground and the atmosphere goes way up into the sky. High in our atmosphere, we've got something called jet streams and they cruise around at really, really high speeds above our troposphere, okay? Sometimes they converge and they're really, really close together and if that happens, it's going to squeeze all of that upper atmosphere air and push it down to the ground. Okay, that's a high pressure system. High pressure systems move from high in the atmosphere and push the air down to the ground. Okay, and that makes the pressure higher on the ground, right? A low pressure system, okay, you've got the jet streams that are going around our planet high in the atmosphere, if they diverge, right, if they move apart, there's a void in between these streams of really fast moving air, and you can't have a big gap in air. Air will fill in the gap from the ground. And so in low pressure systems, air is rising from the ground up high into the atmosphere, and it leaves behind lower pressure, right? The air is leaving the ground and going up into the atmosphere and you're left with lower pressure. Well, what happens as we go up into the atmosphere? We learned when we were talking about the layers of the atmosphere is when you, when you go further up in altitude, 
it gets cooler, right? Because you're leaving the warmth of the ground. The ground holds a tremendous amount of heat. And so as we go up, that air is going to cool down. It's going to condense. And that's where we get clouds forming and we'll eventually get precipitation. Okay. Um, I have, I, I'm not in my classroom. Um, so I'm using my wall as my whiteboard. There's a cute picture of my grandma. Isn't she cute? Um, I'm going to make this full screen here so that you can see. Okay. So a high pressure system moves downward from high in the atmosphere. The air is moving down towards the ground. It moves outward from the center of a high, right? You've got, that's the full side of the bucket of water. You've got the most air there, and it's going to rush out of the center of the high into areas of lower pressure. And it also moves clockwise in the northern hemisphere. And that's because of the rotation of the Earth. That's something called the Coriolis effect. Down here in a low pressure system, air is moving from the ground up high in the atmosphere. It's moving inward. Air is rushing into the center of a low, and that is going to move counterclockwise. Okay, so there's something that I learned when I was in um, school to learn meteorology, and it's called the hand twist model. If we were in class together, I'd have you do this with me. Um, for a high pressure system, if you had a weather map like the one that I was showing you before, you could put your hand, bring your fingers together like this, and put your hand right over where that H is, and you would move your hand clockwise and move your fingers outward and move the palm of your hand down, okay? So a high pressure system is like you're turning, turning the volume high. You're moving it to the right, you're moving it clockwise, and you're moving the palm of your hand down. The palm of your hand acts like the volume of air, pushing from high in the atmosphere down to low onto the ground, okay? So high pressure systems the wind is always going to move in this direction. In a low pressure system, you start with the air at ground level, right? So your hand's going to be flat on the page, air is going to rush in, and it's going to move counterclockwise, okay? So what does that mean? Why do we, why do we have this hand twist model? Well, it's a quick reference to... Um, how the winds are moving around these when you're looking at a weather map. Okay, so let's say I'm standing right here and there's this high pressure system and I want to know what the weather is going to be in 12 to 24 hours. Okay, well I know that high pressure, the winds are moving, they're moving clockwise and outward from the center of the high. Okay, so I could even put my hand on this screen. You wouldn't be able to see it. Um, but if I put my hand on the screen and I did that hand twist model where my hand was starting high and moving clockwise and outward, I could say, okay, well, this uh, the weather that I'm experiencing right here is going to then be over here tomorrow. The weather that is here right here is going to be over here tomorrow, right? because the winds are pushing this weather system out in all directions clockwise. The reverse is true at a low pressure system. Okay, so you're sitting right here and you're wondering what the weather might be, you know, where, where the weather is coming from. When you're standing here, the air is going to be rushing into the center of a low from all of these areas around in a counterclockwise direction. All right, um, I'm going to have you guys watch a little video clip with me on here um, just so you can, we can talk about it afterwards. So we'll listen to this guy Smiley here. What are we going to learn tonight? Well, uh, some of the basics to weather. What makes nice weather? What makes stormy weather? <laughs> That's simple, right? Here's a question from Eagle Middle School. Hi, my name is Jody Gilbertson, and I go to Eagle Middle School. And my weather question is, why is it that high weather pressure is associated with fair wind, 
and, and clear skies, but low pressure is associated with dark clouds and precipitation. Great question. So we're talking high pressure and low pressure. She's saying, why is high pressure associated with clear skies and light winds and low pressure associated with storms and rain? Well, we're going to put it together Put it uh, together this way. You have to look at weather as three-dimensional. That's the key here. That was one of the most difficult things when I went to college when they started talking about the weather in three dimensions. I was just staring at weather maps that I'd see in the newspaper here um, down at the ground. But everything at the ground is occurring by what's happening aloft here. So let's look at the jet stream. This is the jet stream here. And this is high and low pressure here. Now you have to understand the water cycle too. Water cycle is as air rises, it will cool and then condense because it, reach, it encounters lower pressure. So the higher air rises, the pressure goes from high pressure to low pressure. You get less pressure, less temperature. It cools and condenses, makes clouds. So wherever there's rising air, we get precipitation. This is what's happening in the jet stream aloft. Here we'll have a convergence zone aloft here. That's when the jet stream winds are con coming together. So as you push the air together, it has nowhere else to go. It can't go up, so it has to go down. And so what happens is we have sinking air, and the air sinks, and it sinks clockwise. So it subsides, as we call it, subsidence. As it's sinking, it warms because it encounters the higher pressure near the ground, and that sinking air also causes a big bubble of high pressure to form here. So sinking air near the high pressure warms and dries, and so you don't have any cloud cover around. We had that pretty much during the day today. As the jet stream's going along, it'll encounter an area where it diverges aloft, and so it separates the air here. We can't have a void. We can't make a vacuum with no air. So something has to replace the air right here, and so air comes up from the ground. So what happens is high pressure now has been over here, so that wind comes out of high pressure. It goes into low pressure counterclockwise. It gets to the middle with nowhere else to go, and it rises to fill this void right here. And so near low pressure, we have rising air, and rising air will then cool and condense and make clouds and precipitation. So you basically have rising air causing clouds and rain, while sinking air is generally dry as it warms up. And if you look at high pressure, low pressure on the ground at the surface here, you also have wind that forms between the two. And as I mentioned to the kids, if I take a room and we fill it up with air, we seal it off and we pump a bunch of air pressure inside the room, then we open the door, the air will rush from high pressure to low pressure outside the door. And because the earth is spinning, it goes around clockwise like this. And so we added a little bit extra here, but generally stormy. All righty. So um, take home message here today. I know it's, uh, we're gonna go over this more on Friday, okay? So um, we'll review it again and I'll show you another couple of videos. But the take home message here is that whenever you see a high pressure zone on a weather map, that is associated with dry, relatively cool. And when I say relatively cool, I mean seasonally cool and clear weather whereas a low pressure system is going to be associated with rain or snow or some sort of precipitation. And you can tell that on a barometer. Now, some of you, especially those of you who maybe have grandparents or maybe you yourself live on a farm, I know my grandparents always had a barometer hanging on the wall and that was really like their weather forecasting tool. Because if you look at a barometer and the barometer starts to drop, that means rain is coming. And if the barometer is rising, that means the air pressure is rising. That means fair weather is on the way. Okay, and so that was a really handy tool back in the day before we had all this fancy technology to be able to predict, you know, when, when um, fields were gonna see some precipitation. All right, we'll talk more about this soon. I hope you are all well. There's no assignment for today, just this video. Uh, tomorrow, I will have another short lecture and then you will also get just a couple questions that go along with a little video. All right, talk to you soon.